So Jack, today we're here to talk about Demolition Man. Uh, Demolition Man uh, was the the uh, 1991 uh, Sylvester Stallone action movie. Demolition Man probably has one of my favorite film premises of all time. Okay. If you haven't seen it, you're not familiar with it. It, it takes place in a future where, where like, Society has changed to be more politically correct, more more polite. It's everything in the future is safe and sanitized for your protection. Lately, I just don't feel like there's anything special about me. You are an incredibly sensitive man who inspires joy, joy feelings in all those around you. And and none of the bad thoughts have to come to your head. And anything that might be bad for you is is illegal, yes, up to and including swearing. <laughs> Which leads to the possibly the greatest running gag in any movie ever. Come on, Hal. Where the goddamn guns? You are fined one credit for a violation of the verbal morality standard. Oh, fuck you. And they keep it going almost the whole film. Thanks a lot, you shit. You will just hear it quietly in the background. Uh, and well, and it's it's a just speaking of it as a science fiction film, it is a deep and fully realized world. This world that is so safe, and the people in this world have become such such sheep that have never known anything that is harsh. And when, when some kind of threat comes along, like just a, just a gangster, just one ordinary gang member is released into this world, and they are completely incapable of handling it. It's great. <laughs> oh, okay. officers. We're not trained to handle this kind of violence. And so they have to call in the old cop who brought him down, Sylvester Stallone. And and actually that leads us to to like giant logic hole number 1, which is uh the, the movie starts in 1996 mm. in the in the, the rough far future of 5 years after the movie was made. Right. Uh, and and LA is a hellhole, and you know all the cops are rough. What doesn't make sense is in the span of thirty some years, not only has the entire societal paradigm shifted to everyone being polite and politically correct, mm -hmm. but even people who are old enough to be around back in the '90s seem to act as if they never happened. The movie needed to take place 250 years in the future. Correct. You have characters like his hard as nails police chief who, who can't understand his caveman ways, yet is clearly old enough to have been alive during his caveman. He's clearly old enough to understand his caveman ways. <laughs> exactly. The so question is, why didn't they just set it 200 years in the future? It's like they only did it for the sake of he could run into that one guy he used to know. My God. I remember when you were a snot-nosed rookie pilot. They finally grounded me. Shit. You're a damn good flyer. You are fined two credits for a violation of the verbal morality standard. The, at, the at the very least, it could have been the full 70 years of the sentence. That would have, that would at least, you want as much time in there as possible sure. for the society shift to be believable. Uh, well, but you know, just how, how they set up the cops, their uniforms, their weapons, the way... The look, the cars. Oh, the cars Aren't are the cars great? great? They're beautiful. They actually, they look almost like what we're seeing future cars look like now with the, <laughs> with the wing doors and self-driving capabilities. <laughs> it all looks great and clean. That, that one cop who has the little uh, device that tells him how to deal with criminals. Maniac has responded with a scornful remark. Approach and repeat ultimatum in an even firmer tone of voice. Add the words, or else. Say it again, but more assertive. It's that that early part of the movie is by far the best chunk. The part of the movie where they're playing up to the premise of this future that can't handle one simple gang member yeah. because they're so babied is brilliant. And then it kind of starts to devolve into a Sylvester Stallone action vehicle. 
cocaine I want. Buckle up. Uh, I have two halves of me. Yeah, yeah. My sci-fi half uh, hates that part of it because they, they, compl- they forget about their entire world during the last action sequence. But the guy who loves action schlock really loves that half. It's not great action schlock. Oh, it's fun. Oh, yeah. they, they end uh, their big end fight. They have a giant laser. They have a freeze beam. Ton of punching, shooting. It's fun. You know what? Hmm. A lot of great performances all around. Yeah. Sandra Bullock plays it perfectly. Yeah. Perhaps you'd like to hear an oldie station. Oldies? Oh, what a relief. Oh, this is the most popular station in town. Wall-to-wall mini tunes. You call them commercials. Her partner, oh, Benjamin Pratt. He plays it great when he's like singing the the old commercial tunes in the car. Yep. Oh wow, this is my fave. Because in the future, everyone loves like commercial jingles. That's popular music. In the future of 35 years from now. <laughs> no, every everyone is giving really genuine performances. Except for Sylvester Stallone, who is the star. But he's... Wrong. Hey, Luke Skywalker, use the force. Oh, dear. Hey, what the hell is this? This needs to be built around the premise. Right. Not around a vehicle for another Stallone action film. Damn it, John, I'm tired of this demolition man shit. They, They focused on the wrong spot, and you see that in the name. The name doesn't really relate to the, the you know the weird future world. The name is the Demolition Man. It's a superhero yeah. film, basically. Yeah, yeah. No, no, it no, it shouldn't be. That that should not have been the focus. I really think somewhere along the early development lines, this was kind of meant as a satire. You know, they they talk about uh, President Schwarzenegger. They make reference to Jackie Chan movies. There's a Lethal Weapon three poster. They name drop other movies. And so well, Sloan, Sloan and Arnold, they had a friendly rivalry going throughout the 80s and 90s. <laughs> exactly. Well, but uh, I guess that's my point, is the, the filmmaker, the writer, or the director had a love of these schlocky action movies, and because the references are woven into the script, I really look at a lot of the schlock as a bit of parody. Unfortunately, it never reaches the point where it's actual parody, but I think, they were, I think that's what they were trying for. Sure, but I, I think I think the key issue for me is though action movie parody and not science fiction future parody was was somebody's focus. Yeah, it's it gets a little muddled. Yeah, I still like a lot of the action sequence. I mean Wesley Snipes, terrific performance. Terrific performance. Basically, and you know this is my second review now, both with Wesley Snipe movies. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why that is. You are now entering the Hall of Violence. His first, uh, or his middle action sequence with Sylvester in the, the what are they called, the, the History the of Violence? Museum. Well, it was just a museum, but there was like a violence wing to the museum. Remember when violence was a thing? Fuck <laughs> <laughs> Mellow greetings. What seems to be your boggle? My boggle? Oh, God. Uh, here's, a, here's, here's a nice touch. Yeah. Like. Wesley Snipes in the museum is clearly acting a little bit deranged. Mm-hmm. Like he shoves somebody's head against a glass wall and then he starts kicking one of the displays. Yeah. And the people around him are so unaccustomed to violent behavior that they're not afraid of him yet. Excuse me, museum patron. Can I? And you know what? It's 35 years from the future we saw where, hell, where L.A. was a hellscape. Yeah. So there must have been at least another 10 years before we hit Utopia. The earthquake was in 2010. Okay, so then what, what are we dealing with here? Then we're only dealing with 20-some years. Yes, I know. I, you, 200. We, 200 minimum right. for this change to take place. We, it, we, 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 it's what we got. It's what we got. We got what we got. We got what we got. We got what we got. According to Cato's plan, I'm the enemy. Because I like to think. I like to read. I'm into freedom of speech and freedom of choice. I'm the kind of guy who likes to sit in a greasy spoon and wonder, gee, should I have the T-bone steak or the jumbo rack of barbecue ribs with the side order of gravy fries? I want high cholesterol. I want to eat bacon and butter and buckets of cheese, okay? Dennis Leary, who is basically performing his stand-up material as a character. And once again, this is the problem, because it's not in, it's not in the service of, of selling the world. It's, it's just Dennis Leary doing his shtick. Yeah. The plot is, the guy, the, the architect of this super safe world, a cocteau, 
he wants to get rid of Dennis Leary. He wants, he wants all the remnants of, of violence and free thought to be wiped away. So he has set up Wesley Snipe to be a violent assassin for him. Mm -hmm. How does he plan to control Wesley Snipes after Wesley Snipes has killed Dennis Leary? This is the this is this is doomsday in Batman versus Superman. All right, Lex Luthor, you killed Superman. Now what about your giant rage monster that you've made? <laughs> well, like he, I, I think there's some fun in there. The the folly of his own arrogance, which is he has programmed Wesley Snipes not to kill him, but not anyone else. And, and Wesley Snipes cleverly gets around it. Right. Will you please kill him? It's pissing me off. So I, th I think I think I think he has also grown too comfortable in his safe world where he didn't think ahead enough for that. Jack, that's kind of brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I like I, I really liked the thing about Demolition Man is the structure is rock solid. Then you start into the details and the the movie falls apart. Yeah, yeah. There's this whole story about Dennis Leary leading the underground people above ground for the revolution. And finally, at the police station, Dennis Leary takes all of his people and they, they all meet the cops and, all right, hey, we're here to be people and be seen. And then Sylvester Stallone goes and fights Wesley Snipes all by himself and the, the team of ragtag bandits don't do anything. <laughs> yes. Also, uh, Cocteau, the, the guy, the architect is dead. Yeah. And suddenly the whole world is going to change? How is he holding this together? They seem to already be sheep. He doesn't, Cocteau doesn't seem to be the key ingredient holding this world together anymore. And my other problem with the world and the world building. Yeah. I don't have any sense of what's going on outside of L.A. It almost makes, makes it sound like this whole world is just L.A. and nothing exists in the rest of the United States or in Europe. None of that. Everything is just like gone. <laughs> You do not realize that Taco Bell was the only restaurant to survive the franchise wars. So? So? Now all restaurants are Taco Bell. No way. What? I just, I just thought I would eat this, this Taco Bell uh, brand taco. I think we should incorporate Taco Bell mm, Taco in, Bell. Into all of our videos. You know Taco Bell is a restaurant? Let's, let's talk about Taco Bell. Arguably, the thing that Demolition Man is most famous for is it is the first time that the public noticed product placement. How could they notice the product placement? <laughs> because <laughs> it was done so clumsily and so blatantly. Now, all restaurants are Taco Bell. Now, the joke is, in the future, mm. Taco Bell won the, the fast food wars. The franchise the wars. The franchise wars. Yeah. And now Taco Bell is the only restaurant. Which presumably like is not just like, there's not just one restaurant in town. All fast food, all fancy restaurants, all diners. Taco Bell is a fancy restaurant. But the most, the most unbelievable thing in the film mm -hmm. is that Taco Bell would win a franchise war. They, they are the first ones out. No, uh, they're fighting dirty, man. They're, they're fighting dirty, but they're the first ones out. Arby's, Arby's and Wendy's are first to go. They're, they got nothing. Arby's, yes. Taco Bell's right behind them. Wendy's will outlast Taco Bell. No, because Taco Bell has some strong allies. Taco Bell uh, has KFC. Taco Bell has Pizza Hut. Taco Bell has some homies. I, th I think that it's... They're, they're homies because they are all desperately clinging on for life together. Exactly. They're desperate. So, like, and obviously McDonald's isn't going to go for Taco Bell first because they're no threat to McDonald's. McDonald's is going after Burger King, right? McDonald's doesn't have to worry. They just have to let the rest fight it out. McDonald's can stay the course. Yeah. And they will just weather it. They, the Mc McDonald's has to worry about Subway. It, it'll... It, the, the franchise... Subway has tricked people into thinking that it's health food. <laughs> Well, and so th this is again where I, I like to dip my toes into this was an early attempt at satirizing the genre. Because there's product placement in every movie. Movies are really expensive and they need extra money to make them. Uh, when you have giant stars like Sylvester Stallone, uh, apparently he had his own driving range. Mm -hmm. Like that was one of his big requests. <laughs> he needed a driving range when not filming. 
Is that true? That is true. Wow. There's a, there's like a, a, a series of videos where Dennis Leary is just talking about like his time on, on Demolition Man. Are you kidding? Yeah. Demolition Man. Um, giant piece of shit. Uh, Wesley Snipes was insane because he insisted on doing all of his own action stuff. And then they'd wait until they wrapped him and then they'd have the stunt guy come in and redo all the action stuff. Sylvester Stallone had his own um, driving range and a golf pro on duty for all 17 hours of each day that was shot. So he'd be standing there in his science fiction outfit going, Hey Dennis, you want to hit some balls? Movies cost a lot of money. They need corporate tie-ins to fill in the budget gaps. Most times these are small little things, like someone picks up a, pe a Pepsi can and takes a drink. Yes, I'm watching the goddamn news. What are you watching, a porno movie? People are paying $10 to see a movie, a little bit less at the time, but you're paying money to see a movie. When you're paying money for your product, you don't want to be advertised to. Agreed. And I think Demolition Man was so blatant with it that it irritated people. The earliest one that I can think of that had product placement, uh, Back to the Future. There's a park bench that says California Raisins on it, and I, I heard this, I think it's, it might be on like the DVD commentary, okay. or some kind of behind the scenes stuff. Yeah. The raisin companies paid for that bench to say California Raisins on it, but when they filmed it in the movie, there was like a dirty homeless man sleeping on the bench, and the California Raisin people were mad, and they, they, they gave them their money back. Oh. Because there was a filthy homeless person on the bench that they paid to have their logo on. <laughs> that's great. And I that's the that. earliest movie I can think of <laughs> that had product placement. So, super sloppy handling of the product placement. Are you, are you aware of the Man, uh, Mandela effect? Like the Berenstein Bears, I-E or E-I, and it's not the way I thought it was pronounced. There's a lot of people, Jack, who, who think that it wasn't Taco Bell and Demolition Man, it was Pizza Hut. I don't know where this, this is, is going. This is a new fun fact I learned about Demolition Man last night. Do you know why there's some people who have memories of it being Pizza Hut instead of Taco Bell? Why? The UK cut used Pizza Hut because Taco Bell wasn't a thing. And my reward is dinner and dancing at Taco Bell. I mean, hey, I like Mexican food, but... Yeah, then my reward is dinner and dancing at Pizza Hut. I mean, hey, I like a big fat piece of pizza, but come on. And with all like the food items that they're stealing? No, right? no, because the windows still say Taco Bell. Like they didn't go, they didn't, they didn't put too much effort into it. <laughs> I love this. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> oh, that is just lovely. Hostly trash. Okay, okay, I've read all about this now, okay. The action in this movie is pretty fun. They have a ton of memorable action sequences. Like everyone remembers the big car crash. with uh, the foam filling up the car. Once again, that's great world building. This is ultra safety world, of course, has like a, <laughs> a super airbag. <laughs> right? Oh, that's, like, that's great. That, that whole ending fight sequence with Sylvester Stallone and uh, Wesley Snipes. Wesley it's, Snipes gets a big laser the, the, gun. The action is, is average at best, except... Heads up! Wesley Snipes gets frozen, and then Sylvester Stallone kicks his shattered head off. Bef and says, heads up. <laughs> oh, Sylvester Stallone. <laughs> He's great. Excellent idea for a movie, but Sylvester Stallone was, he was at his worst. Oh, uh, Ar Artistically, yeah. ar artistically. Uh -huh. Is it the low point of Sylvester Stallone's career? Like, you go from Rocky. Are you forgetting about Stop or My Mom Will Shoot? Right around the same era. <laughs> right around the same Right era. around the same era. Is that early 90s the low point for Sylvester Stallone? Creatively. He, he had a, at some point he realized, oh my God, what am I doing? And he tried to make Copland. But that was him trying to dig his way out. It's like, yeah. I gotta do something art. <laughs> I have to be serious again. Well, see, like I think, I think Demolition Man, Stop or My Mom Will Shoot. That was kind of a pivot towards cashing in on his celebrity as an action star. Yeah. So, like, hey, this movie requires like a big dumb action star to be a fish out of water, mm -hmm. and that's that's what he was. That's that's why 
I think his big dumb performance makes a lot of sense in the movie. Bony, the, the wild mambo, the, the hunk of chunk. I just, I just see my, my ultimate, my ultimate feelings on Demolition Man is that that detracts from what is just such an amazing science fiction concept. But you get to hear Sylvester Stallone say hunk of chunk. <laughs> science, science fiction can it just lets you take humanity and put it in these completely situations that would normally be improbable or impossible. And let's let's see how it plays out. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just this ultra safe world that can't handle the simplest of problems. It's just such a good premise, and it just turns into yo yo. I'm saying a stupid thing. Seashells. I don't know how to use seashells. Uh. <laughs> He doesn't know how to use the three seashells. <laughs> but you know, this led to his uh, his eventual team up with Rob Schneider in Judge Dredd. So, so, so we can thank Demolition Man for that. They, that introduced him to Rob Schneider. So there we we got that going for us. <laughs>